So there are tons of ideal and unusual modes of transportation out there in the sci-fi world, and we wish that we could utilize, well, all of them. From super cool cars to incredible spacecraft and beyond, we decide to delve in and see just which vehicles in the sci-fi world were the cream of the crop. Here we have a list of what we believe to be the nine coolest sci-fi modes of transportation. Number 9. Millennium Falcon A well-known, or shall we say extremely well-known, science fiction whip is the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. Listed as a modified YT-1300F Corellian light freighter starship, this bad boy was commanded, at least for time, by the infamous Han Solo and his first mate, Chewbacca. Initially, the Falcon appeared more elongated, but George Lucas changed it because it too closely resembled vehicles in Space 1999, the Eagle Transporters. The original design didn't go to waste, though, as it was used to design Princess Leia's ship in A New Hope. Throughout the Star Wars films, the Falcon eludes many a foe, destroys TIE fighters and other enemy ships, and jumps to hyperdrive to travel at light speed, crossing galaxies and universes nearly instantaneously. Climbing aboard the Millennium Falcon has been many a kid's dream since it first made its debut in 1977. And we gotta say, we as adults wouldn't mind plopping down into one of the turrets on the ship and taking aim at enemy fighters speeding among the stars. Number 8. The Batmobile This crazy cool car has had many different appearances throughout the years, but its primary function has always remained the same, to aid Batman in his crime-fighting campaign. The vehicle is arguably Batman's most sophisticated and technologically advanced weapon that he has at his disposal, and it's been a staple in the minds of superhero fans everywhere since it hit the scene. Typically, the Batmobile has wing-shaped tail fins and includes a prominent bat motif and evolves with every new iteration of the crime-fighting Bruce Wayne. From transporting prisoners, being used as a mobile crime lab, actively engaging in firefights and beyond, the Batmobile is one bad vehicle for a pretty bad dude. The Batmobile encompasses nearly all of the sophisticated features us ordinary people wish we could build into our day-to-day -day vehicles that will never come to fruition. There are tons of replicas to be had in the real world, but that's all they will ever be. Recreations of the ever-changing, ever-styling weapon of justice wielded by the Batman. Number 7. Light Cycle Ever ridden a motorcycle? We'd bet that you've never ridden anything quite like a light cycle before. Popularized by and based in the world of Tron, light cycles are quite the mode of transportation. Once rezzed in by a program's rod, a light cycle forces the driver into a riding position, covers them completely, and takes them on an amazingly speedy ride across light cycle grid. Although on the grid, the motorcycle-like ride can only drive in straight lines and make turns of 90 degrees, all while leaving behind a solid jet wall in their wake. Off the light cycle grid, these sweet vehicles can travel like any old motorcycle. The color of the light cycle correlates to the color of the rod that generated it, thus delineating teams and team members can communicate amongst themselves via a communication system inside. Riders have to watch out not to run into a jet wall though, as jet walls can derez a rider and their cycle. They're also susceptible to tank arrows and other forms of attacks, although they can outmaneuver most if the rider is skilled enough. Who wouldn't want to ride one of these things, if only Tron were somewhere that we could visit and get our game on? Number 6. Heart of Gold If you've ever read, seen, or listened to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you might just remember the Heart of Gold. The Starship was the first craft equipped with an infinite probability drive, the mechanism that gives a ship the ability to jump through space almost instantaneously without smashing into everything. The vessel was eventually snagged by Arthur Dent, the story's protagonist, and Ford Prefect after they escaped the destruction of Earth. The space vehicle was built 150 meters long and shaped like an awkward running shoe in the novels and TV series, and in the movie, produced in 2005, it is depicted more like a sphere with a hole in brake lights, almost like a teacup. It features enormous video screens, guidance system, banks of computers, the infinite probability drive, and possibly the most memorable part of the craft, the depressed Marvin, the paranoid android. We know that we always wondered what traveling aboard the Heart of Gold would be like, what adventures it would bring us, and where it would take us, so it's fathomable to think that maybe you too had dreamt of making a jump through space with the infinite probability drive. You have to admit, it sounds kind of fun. Number 5. The DeLorean Time Machine Millions of people from around the world would recognize this incredible sci-fi vehicle if it were to go speeding or flying around the streets. This semi-ugly but altogether fun car was used as a time machine in the Back to the Future trilogy and transported Doc and Marty back and forth across time as they tried to keep the world in working order. Turn on the time circuits, enter a destination, hit 88 miles per hour, and the flux capacitor does the rest. As long as it's fed plutonium and 1.21 gigawatts of power, the car and its occupants 
participants are temporarily, temporally displaced and arrive, for the most part, unharmed in either the future or the past. That goes for the first two films, at least. In the third, the fuel line is breached and Doc and Marty have to figure out other means for bringing the DeLorean up to speed, which they eventually end up doing with the help of a steam locomotive. The car is something many have dreamed of since 1985, and it goes down in history as one of the coolest science fiction vehicles ever. Number 4. Pod Racers If you're a fan of Star Wars, and if you're watching this video, we bet that you are, you probably know what a pod racer is. For those of you who don't know, let us learn you a thing. First introduced in Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, they are repulsor craft built for the sole purpose of racing. Much like NASCAR in our world, pod racing is a much-loved and cherished form of entertainment on Tatooine, the home planet of Anakin and Luke Skywalker. They are known to be able to travel faster than 700 kilometers per hour and come in all different forms. Perhaps the most famous pod racer was Anakin's beloved and custom-built beast of a vehicle that the nine-year-old boy built from spare parts from Watto's junkyard, where he was enslaved. His custom ride could reach speeds of 947 kilometers per hour, flying faster than a lot of his competition. It helped him overtake Sebulba, thus unknowingly winning his freedom. Modifications on the repulsor craft vary widely, and a racer can do pretty much anything that he or she wants to their pod racer, so long as it can still compete. Watching pod racing is seems to be much more exciting than watching a NASCAR race, so we can only hope that with new technological advances, we might be seeing races like these take place sometime in the future. More than likely not, but hey, we can dream, can't we? Number 3. The Nebuchadnezzar Oh, The Matrix. If you remember watching this trilogy and getting excited over this flying, dodging, EMP-loaded vehicle, you are not alone. We first see the ship not long after Neo awakens from the Matrix and is born into our world, only to be taken aboard the craft and nursed to full health. Not only is the ship fully equipped to be able to send people back and forth between the simulation and our world, but it's also pretty good at the old dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge. Dodgeball, anyone? We fondly reminisce about the close calls and near destruction of this ship, like the time that Morpheus, Tank, and Trinity wait, wait, and wait some more for Neo to return from the Matrix to unleash a powerful EMP burst to stop an onslaught from pesky Sentinels. He ends up making it just in time before the weapon is discharged, thus preventing him from being trapped in the simulation. The ship was heavily damaged though, but it proves its worth by making a recovery and reappearing in the Matrix Reloaded. Although destroyed in the second of the three films, it was pretty darn cool and was a vehicle that we wish we could have taken a ride in if not to avoid Sentinels at high speeds, to cruise along with Morpheus and his ragtag crew of rebels. Number 2. Hoverboards Alright, alright, we know that we already mentioned Back to Future Trilogy once on this list, but there are simply too many neat modes of transportation dreamed up in these classics. The hoverboard, Michael J. Fox's saving grace in multiple scenes spanning two different movies, had to make our list. It's a hover-converted board that works basically like a skateboard without trucks or wheels. In 2015, in the movies that is, lots of different companies designed and released hoverboards of all different styles for different age ranges and skating, or hovering styles? Mattel created the famed board that Marty McFly uses to escape Griff and his gang and send them to prison, helping to supply Griff's famous last words, I was framed. Although the board that Marty used is pretty basic and designed with children in mind, it got the job done. It even helped him succeed in making it back to to 1985 via DeLorean in the car's steam engine assisted push into the future. Variations on the boards include the No Tech series, the Question Mark, Rising Sun, and Griff Tannen's rocket propelled Pitbull. Many companies have tried to achieve the technology in the real world, and although there have been some pretty successful attempts at recreating one of the film's most recognized futuristic technologies, there's still a far cry from being as incredible as the boards from the movies. Every kid who's seen Marty flying around on his hoverboard has dreamed of the day they'd be able to ride their own. But for now, it seems that it may just remain that for years to come. A dream. Number 1. Terrariums of 2312 Alright, we're assuming that not many of you have heard of these fantastic space habitats, transportation vessels, and farming worlds, but let us tell you a little bit about them. Kim Stanley Robinson wrote a book called 2312 in 2012 that utilized asteroids to efficiently house humans, grow crops for Earth, and transport people to the outer planets exceptionally quickly. The asteroids are hollowed out using self-replicating machine excavators and ecosystems that are housed inside. 
the ecosystems can thrive due to artificial gravity from centripetal force, protection from radiation by the asteroid's solid walls, and a sunline that provides artificial light. There is one entry hole in the asteroid that allows access to the Terraria ecosystems. They travel about the solar system as asteroids usually do, non-stop and on their regular trajectories. Anyone that wishes to enter one of the terrariums needs to match the speed of the asteroid as it doesn't slow down or stop for anyone. Entire little worlds can be sustained inside these fantastic terrariums, and they make us wonder about the real possibility of using this idea in the future. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just use naturally occurring objects in our solar system to house the ever-growing population of Earth? We'd sign up to live on one and get away from all of the problems that our world is facing. And we'd be willing to make a bet that a lot of you would too.